the next topic is data types so every language has data types and so has python in python there are nine major data types and we are going to study them in detail but for now we'll just see what are the various data types available in python so there are nine data types and these are on your screen int float string boolean complex list tuple sets and dictionary okay so what i'll do is i'll quickly show you how they look okay at least so that we can recognize them uh, in future when we'll meet them uh, let's first talk about integer you already know how they look so this is an integer right simple next float float is something with a decimal value and this is a float uh, python does not have a character like c but there is a string so i'll show you how a string looks string uh, let's say kolkata okay both single and double quotation marks are allowed so there is no difference let's say mumbai and if you run it you'll get your result okay next is boolean i guess you are already aware of this data type it's a very popular data type used quite a lot in programming while creating logic so there are only two things true and false right uh, just make sure you put a capital t and f because that's syntax next is a very um, unique data or data type it's generally not available in other languages according to my experience uh, it's complex so you must have done complex numbers in high school and in python a complex number will look like this right 4 plus 6 j uh, these five are primitive data types okay the original data types the next four that we are going to discuss are list tuples sets and dictionaries they are non primitive data types as in they are made using primitive data types okay so let me show you how a list uh, will look in python so a list is pretty much a uh, array uh, an array in c okay it's pretty much uh, very very similar to uh, arrays in c let me show you so this is how a print looks in python it's almost an array there are some added features powerful <coughs> features that we'll discuss when we'll discuss list in detail okay then we have uh, a very similar looking data structure called tuple some people prefer calling it tuple i i prefer it call i prefer calling it tuple sounds nicer and a tuple will look like this small brackets okay so a list has square brackets a tuple has square brackets i'm sorry small brackets and finally we have the last two data types one is sets i hope you remember set theory set intersection set union disjoint sets it's the same set uh, and a set looks like this in python you have this curly braces and then you have your items separated by a comma okay the last one is dictionary and it's a very very powerful data type and uh, it's actually a uh, it's actually used a lot it's used quite a lot in python and you will uh, actually understand the power of dictionaries when you use them extremely popular extremely powerful uh, these are very much similar to structures in c or if you have done hash maps in java it's very similar key value pairs are there so a dictionary consists of key value pairs separated by a comma let me show you so you have a curly brace then you <clears throat> write your key then you write your value then a comma then second uh key value and so on okay i'll show you one example so this is one of the examples and that is how a dictionary looks in python okay so we did nine different data types integer float string boolean complex list tuple sets and dictionaries we'll discuss them in detail in the uh, future part of this video okay so next we'll discuss a very important function called the type function okay so what does the type function do uh, if you provide a piece of data in the type function the type function will return its data type that's its primary function and to be honest if you believe me it's a function that is very very useful under a lot of circumstances 
let me first show you how type function is used and then I'll explain where you can use it. Okay. So uh, let's say I provide four inside the type function and if I run it, you'll see that the output is int. So it's giving me back the data type of four. Okay. Similarly, if you write type of four plus six J, it would return complex. I'll give you two more examples just to solidify the understanding. Type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This would give you a list. And finally, I'll show you one last example with a dictionary. And you can see that it's giving me dictionary as the written value. Now you might ask, where can we use type function? So I'll tell you uh, on the basis of my experience. Whenever you're working on a big project, a big project which has multiple files, you have multiple classes, there are multiple people working on the same project and at times you are working on a file where your senior programming is also working. Okay, So you are working on line number 600, your senior programming is, uh, programmer is working on line 300 and let's say he created some variable A which you have to use now. Okay, Now right now I have no idea what is the current data that is stored inside A. And now since I have to write some logic using A, I should understand or rather I should know what data type is A holding. In that case, I would simply use type to check what is the type of the data. Okay. So uh, this is just one example. Just believe me, it's a great function. It's a cool function. You'll use it a lot when you will do proper Python programming. And uh, I would just say till then, just remember that this is one tool. Uh, in your you know armory and you can use it whenever you want okay now uh, now let's discuss the input function okay uh, I thought before discussing the input function uh, why not discuss the type function okay so let's discuss the input function or how to take user input 